everyone. So today I would like to explain a chapter from the practice of English language teaching book by Jeremy Harmer entitled Class, Class Size and Different Abilities. So let's get started. Okay, so a typical class size in a lot of primary and secondary education around the world comprises some 13 until 14 students. We will consider two extremes, large uh, classes and teaching one-to-one. -one. First about large classes. The key elements in successful large group teaching include be organized. The bigger the group, the more organized we have to be and the more we need to know what we are going to do before the lesson starts. And then establish and use routines. The daily management of a large uh, class will be greatly enhanced. Enhance. If we establish routine uh, that we and our students recognize right away, this will make jobs like taking the register, setting and collecting homework, getting into pairs and groups and etc. far easier and then use a different pace for different activities. In a small class or in one-to-one -one teaching, it is not difficult to vary the pace of what we do on the basis of how, how the students are reacting. And then uh, maximize individual work. The more we can give the students individual work, even in a large class, uh, the more we can mitigate the effects of always working with a large group as a whole and then use the students. We can give the students a number of different responsibilities in the class. For example, we can appoint class monitors whose job is to collect homework or hand out worksheets. And then uh, one particular teaching context is that of an individual student working alone with a teacher over a period of hours or weeks in what are often referred to as uh, private classes. Such one-to-one -one teaching is extremely popular, especially for business students. And this is the guide, uh, guidelines to conduct teaching one-to-one. -one. Uh, so the guidelines are make a good impression. A good impression is cre created by the way we present ourselves and how we behave during the first lesson and then be well prepared. One of the most important ways of creating a good impression is to show the student that we are well prepared and uh, that we have given thought to what we are going to do in the lesson. And then find out who the student is. One of the most important parts to, of uh, the one-to-one -one teacher's job is to find out who the student is and how they feel about learning and what they need and then give explanation and uh, guidelines. Uh, when we first meet one-to-one -one students, it is important to explain what is going to happen and how the student can contribute to the program they are involved in. And then be flexible. One-to-one -one lessons provide enormous opportunities for flexibility. For example, it is not difficult to suggest a two-minute break involving getting up and walking around. And then about managing mixed, uh, mixed ability. Many teachers worry about the fact that they have students in their classes who are at different level of proficiency. Indeed, mixed ability classes are a major preoccupation for most of us because they appear to make planning and the execution of plans in lessons extremely difficult. In private language schools and lang language institute, we try to make the situation manageable by giving students placement tasks so that they can be put into classes with people who are at only the same level as they are. In a differentiated classroom, there is a variety of learning options designed around the students' different abilities and interests. We may, for example, give a different student different tasks. Perhaps we could give uh, them different things to read or listen to. We could respond to them differently too and group them according to their different abilities. And then working with different content. 
One way of working with students at different levels and with different needs is to provide them with different material tailoring what we give them to their individual needs. Another way of offering different content is to allow the students to make choices about the what material they are going to work with. This is des desirable as an attempt to provoke learner autonomy, but it also means that the students can choose material that will help them the most. And then different students action. If we cannot offer our students different materials, we can instead get them to do different things in response to the content that uh, they are uh, looking at or listening to. First, give different students different tasks. We might ask all our students to look at the same reading text, but make a difference in terms of the tasks we ask them to do in response to it and then give the students different roles or levels of support. Within tasks, we can give the students different roles. If they are doing a role play in which a police officer in questioning a witness, for example. And then challenge early finisher. If all the students are doing the same task uh, with the same content, some may well finish earlier than others. And then encourage different student responses. We can give our students exactly the same materials and tasks, but accept different student responses to them. To them. And, and then uh, identify student strengths. Uh, one of the ways we can make a virtue of uh, different student abilities is to include tasks which do not necessarily demand linguistic brilliance, but instead allow the students to show off uh, uh, other talents they have. And then what the teacher does, whether we are working with the whole class with uh, smaller groups or with individuals, we will treat different students differently. Uh, the first, we need to respond to students. During lessons, we frequently have to respond to our students, giving them feedback about how they are doing or acting as a resource or tutor. And then being inclusive. The skill of a mixed ability teacher is to draw all of the students into the lesson. They will ask questions that all the students can understand and relate to so that uh, their interest is aroused and so that they all understand the goal they are aiming for. And then flexible grouping. We can group our students flexible, flexibly for a number of times. Sometimes we might put them in different groups so that each group can do different activities. And then special education needs. It is highly possible to teacher will find themselves teaching classes which include students with special educa education needs. Special educational needs can take many forms like dyslexia uh, is remarkably uh, common and then uh, some students show clear patterns of attention deficit disorder or autism and have mem memory problems or fine listening. And then writing and speaking is especially difficult. And then uh, there are students who are visually or hearing impaired. The ideas and techniques are below. Learners are learners. We have to look for each stu individual student's strength, not their weaknesses, and make the most of those and then find out what is going on. The first stage is helping someone with learning difficulties is to identify the problem. With younger learners, uh, problems may emerge gradually, but by the time we start teaching older children, we will hopefully know something about their educational needs. In such situation, we will rely on previous reports and wherever possible on the knowledge and advice of colleague. And then uh, be inclusive. Our teaching should be a mixture of individual coaching and inclusion. Inclusion is important both for the student who may be experiencing a difficulty, but also for the other students in the class. And then calm and safe learning environments. For many students, uncertainty can be very unsettling. Clear and transparent routines may have a calming effect in such cases. And then realistic missed ability teaching. 
The degree to which we are able to differentiate between uh, individuals depends on uh, the physical situation in which their learning takes place. If we teach in overcrowded uh, classrooms, it will be difficult to set up different corners in the room where different students can go to perform different tasks. On the other hand, if uh, the school is e equipped with, the, with a well-stocked self-access center, where the student can go and work individually on a range of materials which are available there, then it will be much easier to put individual learning programs into the curriculum. While we recognize the need for differentiation, we need to be realistic about how we can achieve it and how much differentiation we can achieve. For example, it is much easier logistically to coach or respond to individuals based on their ability and who they are than it is to plan individual schemes, schemes of work for nine classes of 13 students each. And finally, it is worth pointing out that uh, learner training and the encouragement of learner autonomy is the ultimate achievement of differentiation. If we can get individual students to take responsibility for their own learning, they are acting as autonomous individuals and differentiation has thus been achieved. Okay, so uh, that's all about chapter seven. And uh, thank you for your attention and see you.